is sick. The mind is sharp. But then the brain is tormented. The life has a great prospect. In front of it, a great future. But then hindrances and disturbances and distractions tie them down. And it says this, such as sit in darkness. Eventually, they just sit down there in darkness. And they say, there's no use trying. There's no use trying to make it. They will not allow me. Who are the day? God allows you. Jesus allows you. The promises of God allow you. And then I'm here and I release you. I allow you to go and succeed. Go and do well. Because the word of the Lord, the declaration of the man of God is greater than that of Pharaoh, greater than that of Herod, and greater than that of Nebuchadnezzar. I release you. Go and fulfill the will of God in your life in Jesus' name. But you know, they just sat down there in darkness and the siege in the shadow of death. They see that death is near. And the shadow of death is hovering over them. And they, they are helpless. Their minds are paralyzed. They will tied up. And their mind, they cannot even think afresh again and move on. And because of that, they are tied down in that affliction and iron. But this is the hour for your hour. I said this is the hour for your hour. Let's look at Romans chapter 7. See another kind of bondage. Romans chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 14. Romans 7 verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. The, the very first thing that ties a man is his confession. The very first thing that makes a man not to be able to move out and move forward is his own confession. I am. I am carnal. What do you expect of me? I am carnal. Our family had that peculiar problem. We always fail when it comes to this age. What do you expect of me? I am carnal. What do you expect of me? I'm just, you know, so and so. You know the tribe I come from? Nobody in our tribe ever does well, but you will do well. You can be the one that breaks that kind of thing. You can be the one that says, I'm going to open the way. Open the way for our tribe. Open the way for our family. And if your family has never been any different, you are the one to open the way. Put the key in your hand, open that door. And move on in Jesus' name. What binds a man? What destroys a man? What keeps a man back is his confession. Look at verse, look at verse 14 again. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm different from the law. I am carnal. I'm sold under sin. And for that which I do, I allow not. That's his confession. What I do, I want to do well. I want to move up. I want to do better, but I'm helpless. That's your confession. Change that confession. I said, change that confession. You know, there are people, they only look at, you know what happened last year now? You know what happened years before? You know what happened 10 years ago? You know what happened to the first born in a family? You know what happened to the second one and the third one? And now it is my turn. It is not my turn. I said, it is not my turn. If you are talking about something spectacular, now it is my turn. If you are talking about the power of God, now it is my turn. If you are talking about a breakthrough, now it is my turn. If you are talking about miracle, now it is my turn. Are you there? It's your turn. I said it's your turn. But our senior brother Mary didn't have a child. My senior sister Mary didn't have a child. 
and then the third one married and you know she tried to have a child and the child died at birth and now i'm the number one i'm the number four i'm married now it is my turn no it's not your turn no it's not your turn you will succeed in jesus name Two years ago in our school, uh, the people that took at that NECO exam, they just cancelled everything. And uh, last year, they took it again, they cancelled everything. Now it's my turn. Is it my turn? Is it your turn? No! You are the one to break that kind of bondage. And that bondage is broken in Jesus' name. But you see the confession of the people that do not understand that the power of God is there to break every bond. This day you are released. And the power of God is released in your life in Jesus name. And it says, for that which I do I allow not. It says, I don't know myself. That's what the people say, that's their confession. I don't know myself. Don't blame me. That's just me. Well, it will change. Then it says, For what I would, I do not. But what I hate, that I do. You know, there are some people that say, They are into this bad habit. And they say, Trust me, I don't want to do it. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's my destiny. Sinning will not be my destiny. I said sinning will not be my destiny. Say it for yourself. Sinning will not be my destiny. You see, my father was a tobacco smoker. His father, my grandfather, was a pipe smoker. And I, I learned that great grandfather was marijuana smoker. And now it is my turn. It's your turn? What are you going to smoke? I said, what are you going to smoke? Now it's their turn. It is not my turn. I said, it is not my turn. That bad habit of smoking is broken in Jesus' name. It says, and if then I do, verse 16, what I would not... I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it. You know what he's saying? I'm helpless, getting angry. It's not, it's not me. It's a family. Fighting is not me. It runs in our family. Wickedness is not me. It runs in our family because it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. What's the next thing there? I say, what's the next thing there? Tell me out loud. It says, I know. It says, I know. This one doesn't have Christ. I know that in me that he is inside my flesh dwelleth no good thing that means it's not saved christ is not there that means the word of god is not there that means the promise of god is not there that means the power of the holy ghost that breaks every yoke is not there this is not you i said this is not you for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good, I find not. If you find Christ, you'll find how to perform that which is good. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. What a confession. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This day, the Savior will replace that sin. The Lord Jesus will dwell in your heart in Jesus' name. And that bondage of sin will be broken away from your life in Jesus' name. Different kinds of bondage. Look. 
Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. A spirit of infirmity. Now, you need to understand when you read about all these things that these are different kinds of bondage. When you are born again, you have the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are born again and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the spirit of inspiration, the spirit of illumination, not the spirit of infirmity. But this one had not met Christ, and Christ was just coming to her, and she had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. That was in the physical, but it happened to some people in the spiritual that they could not lift up themselves. And they just stay there. They are bowed there. They are bent there. The desires are there. Their aspirations are there. The longing is there, but they are bowed there. The yoke in that life is broken in Jesus' name. And it says, and when Jesus saw her, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord has seen you where you are today. And this is the power for your hour. That time has come. I said that time has come. How long has it continued now in your life? 12 years, 18 years, 20 years. And then it says, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. And said unto her, woman, thou at loosed from thine infirmity final i said final broken and never to come back again delivered and never to be bound again from bondage unto breakthrough and the power of christ came upon her and he laid a signs on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But there are some people that have been happy to leave the woman like that. There's some people that should have been happy to see the man, the woman bound, bent, bowing, not able to look up, not able to stand straight, not able to move forward, not able to fend for herself. There are some people that will prefer that that woman will stay like that. But Jesus is going to disappoint your enemies. Verse 14, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Ruler of the synagogue. They want to rule everybody's life. Since the rulers of synagogue, they also want to rule the life of everybody. They will not rule your life. Jesus will come to your life and get you out of the desire, out of that permanent bondage and expectation of the Pharisees and of those rulers of the synagogue in Jesus' name, filled with, with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come. And be healed and not on the sabbath day what is the best day to get healed the day of rest day of revival day of worship what is the best day to have the power of god in your life the day holy day sabbath day that is consecrated and committed unto serving the lord when is the best day to remember that our God is still powerful? Our God is still mighty. Our God is still breaking you on the day when you remember the Lord. And this fellow, the Israel of the synagogue, turned it upside down. And he said, on the Sabbath day, day of celebration, day of joy, day of happiness, and day of God, day of the Lord, and the day of celebration. Don't come and be healed at that time. And the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, your enemies are hypocrites. I said, Your enemies are hypocrites. 
they desire good things for themselves they don't want anything good for you that's hypocrisy they desire good things for their own family they don't want good things for your, uh, for your own family that's hypocrisy and they smile when they, when they see you. The, the ruler of the synagogue will say, everybody now, welcome, welcome. We're happy you're here. The ruler of the synagogue will say, now it's time, offering time. Come and put your offering there. And they get their money. But when good things happen to them, they're not happy. That's hypocrisy. And no hypocrite will have authority in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord said, and, and they all answered and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox and his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? You lose your ox, can't I lose my own member? You lose your ox and your sheep and you lead them away freely. On the Sabbath day, can't I release the creatures of God and the sons and the daughters of Abraham? Verse 16, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Who bound this woman? Where does the spirit of infirmity come from? From Satan, whom Satan has bound. Lo, these eighteen years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day, you are loosed. You are delivered. You are set free. Point number two, this is for you. I said this is for you. I said this is for you. Definite freedom from bondage in John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 32 and you shall know the truth say I know the truth say that I know the truth say that confidently praise the Lord and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free freedom from sin freedom from sickness Freedom from suffering, freedom from satanic affliction. The Lord will make you free completely today in Jesus' name. Verse 36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It has happened. I said it has happened. At the time of prayer, we're just going to confirm what has happened already. In Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 6. Exodus 6, 6. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Give me a good amen there. I will. I will. Pharaoh is going to say it's not possible, but God will do it. The magicians are going to say it's not possible, but God will do it. Your enemies are going to say it's not possible, but God is going to do it. You know, Pharaoh, he, he used cheap labor of those Israelites. And they build Ramses and build the tower and build this cheap labor. And somebody came and said, let my people go. And he said, how? How can that be? I lose the free service. I lose the cheap labor. I lose the slaves that don't have anyone, anybody to defend them. Have you noticed that there's somebody there that you know you want to get married and your uncle is saying if you get married and then you're going to have your own children who is going to train my children because while you are not married they're happy while you are not married you're all the money you have you're just working for them and when now the yoke is going to be broken, they're all, you know, coming here and there and they say, no way, no way, no way, this cannot happen. 